thank you all for joining us today. Dear friends, we are gathered here together at this sweet and sacred time to witness the renewal of the wedding vows between Lori and Chris in the enduring bonds of Christian marriage. This happiest and holiest of human relationships was first celebrated in the quiet gardens of Eden in the springtime of history. Marriage is a divine, distinctive, directed, and enduring institution instituted by Almighty God and given to man in a state of innocence and happiness. The divine record of the first marriage was thus. And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone, and I will make him a helper comparable to him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air, and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called each living creature, that was its name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle, to all the birds of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found a helper comparable to him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place thereof. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. And they shall become, therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. God gives specific directions and regulations for the government of the marriage estate. Paul addresses this when he says, wives submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should always be holy and without blemish. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as the Lord does the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Lord, we ask, Lord, we ask that you be glorified in this ceremony and in this marriage. In Jesus' name, amen. As we gather to this celebration of Christian marriage, let us remember that this is a Christian marriage. Its foundation is Christ, Jesus our Lord, and his love for his bride, the church. The truth must be worked into our this truth must be worked into our day-to-day -day situations and relationships. Today we honor the husband and wife relationship. Marriage is a covenant made between two people to love and loyalty. These two stand before us today to renew that covenant. Marriage is certainly for our pleasure, enjoyment, and happiness. However, marriage is the work of the living triune God revealing himself to us. This union between a man and woman in marriage is more than sociological and more than biological. It is theological. The intimacy between a man and woman in marriage is an example of an even greater intimacy that Christ has with his bride, the church. The Apostle Paul uses the person and work of Christ as a pattern for marriage. In the fifth chapter of Ephesians, Paul charges the husband to love his wife as himself, just as Christ loves the church. Then Paul charges the wife to respect her husband. So within this covenant of marriage, there is both love and respect. What is the nature of this love and respect that's been renewed 
rediscovered and rekindled in the hearts of these two people today. Number one, love gives. Christ so loved the church that he gave himself for her. This love is unconditional. It loves for better or for worse, for richer or for poor, in sickness and in health. This love chases after the one that is hurting and weak. This love gives when the other is unable to give. There is no strings attached to this love. This love gives up all rights to self and flows freely in gracious generosity. Love gives special gifts, not necessarily expensive gifts or even an abundance of gifts, but small, thoughtful tokens of love and respect. This love serves. This love spends exclusive time together. This love gives in a gentle touch. This love gives in a tender word. Number two, love cleanses. As Christ cleanses and sanctifies the church, so too love and respect within the covenant of marriage cleanses and purifies. The bride and the groom have been preparing themselves for this day. They have been washing, shaving, gargling, perfuming, and cologne, dressing in their best dress and suit. But this, because they love one another, they clean up for one another. But this cleansing is more than what we see on the surface. There is an inner cleansing that has occurred and will continue throughout this relationship. In any marriage relationship, we come with and gather during some residue and some baggage and some filth that needs to be washed away. Just as Jesus cleanses his bride, the church, with the washing of his word, this covenant relationship can be cleansed daily by spending time together in his word. Love is unconditional and accepts us as we are, but true love loves deeply and will not leave us as we were. And number three, love exalts. As Christ will exalt his bride, the church, to present her pure and holy, so too love and respect within marriage will lift and exalt one another. To be loved and to love is a great lifting experience. A husband and a wife in love free each other to greater heights of fulfillment and strength. As you walk together and you climb the hills of life, gently encouraging one another to the exalted heights of true love and fellowship. And remember, God is love. It is this kind of love that has been rediscovered here today. Love that gives, cleanses, and exalts. We cannot do this on our own. We must look to and seek the Lord for his empowering love to change us through faith in Christ who gave himself for us. When God changes us and he comes to take residence in us, we will find the life, love, and respect we are all seeking. We become the temple of his Holy Spirit, and by his power we can love, honor, and cherish from this day forward and forever. The Apostle Paul writes in 1 Corinthians, Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in inequity, but rejoices in the truth, bearing all things, and believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. Please pray with me. Father, we look to you as a source for every good thing in our life. We look to you now to bless this marriage covenant between Lori and Chris. May your spirit guide them as, we, as they continue their journey together and give them true love for one another. Your love, which is our life. Give them a love which is beyond their natural ability to love. A love that comes from you. Give them your peace and confidence that you are committed to their marriage. Grant them the simple ability to be gracious to each other. Grant them the gift of faithfulness, of gentleness, and self-control. Bring joy to their marriage and allow each to be confident in the love of the other. Give them the freedom to love as you have loved them. Thank you, Father. You have given us the gift of yourself in the love of Jesus. Amen. If you then, Lori and Chris, have freely and deliberately chosen to renew your partnership in this holy estate and know of no just cause why you should not renew your commitment in marriage in token thereof, will you please join your right hand.
Chris, will you repeat after me? In taking the woman I hold by the right hand to be my wedded wife, Good. Before God and these witnesses, I promise to love her, to honor her, and cherish her in this relationship. Before God and these witnesses, I promise to love her, to honor her, and cherish her in this relationship. And cleave only unto her. In all things, a true and faithful husband, as long as we both shall live. Boy, will you repeat after me. In taking the man I hold by the right hand to be my wedded husband, before God and these witnesses, I promise to love him, to honor him, and cherish him in this relationship and plead only unto him in all things the true and faithful wife as long as we both shall live. Then you are each given to the other for richer or for poorer, for better or for worse, in sickness and in health, till death shall you part. Now who has the rings set? Let's, let's bring in the rings. The wedding ring is a fitting symbol, symbol of the vows of marriage in two ways. The circular shape of the ring reminds us that marriage is a never-ending relationship which grows ever sweeter through the ever-encircling years, and the gold gives us a symbol of the glory and purity of the covenant of marriage. Chris, will you please place the ring on Lori's finger? And repeat after me. With this ring, I renew my vow to love and to cherish with joy through the grace of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Glory, will you place, please place the ring on Chris's finger? And repeat after me. With this ring, I renew my vow to love and to cherish with joy through the grace of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now, is there anyone who may object to this ceremony? Speak now or forever hold your peace. <laughs> Now upon your mutual promise made in the presence of God and these witnesses and according to the authority invested in me as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I recommit your vows as husband and wife. Please turn and face the crowd. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you Mr. and Mrs. Chris and Lori Smith.